So guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on mathematics and five. Uh, in this platform, working on derivatives um, from the question paper, which was written in February 2022. So we just want to see how actually uh, do they ask these questions. I've seen that uh, working with question papers is much an easier way because we are actually learning a direct way of answering the question. Yes, we can work with these as topics, but as we are working question papers, much question papers is the same thing as working uh, like we are working actually on a topic. Okay, anyways, without wasting much time, we are going to quickly rush through uh, the questions, which is the first part. We are given the question 2.1. Determine dy dx if f of x is equivalent to cos x using first principles. Show all intermediate steps, which means all the necessary steps must be shown uh, on this one. All right, uh, we are given a hint that the limit of cos uh, minus one over h applies to zero. And also we are given, sorry, this is cos h. Hey, hey guys, see now the way that I'm pronouncing now, cos h. All right, the same thing, we're given the limit of sine h over h as x approaches to zero is a one. So this is uh, the most important part that you're going to use later on. I'm going to show you uh, later on. Uh, but the first thing, how can we, apply our our first principles for cos okay so this is f of x which is equivalent to uh to cos x or oh, remember we, we are taking this from y is equal to cos of x which is the same thing as writing the same way that we're given f of x is equivalent to cos of x so remember that uh, the derivative which is dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches to zero of f of x plus h, so we've got f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is the formula of first principles that we're supposed to have. Uh, we have f of x, we do not have f of x plus h. So that means here we are going to add another part of f of x plus h, all right? So this is f of x plus h, whereby in place of x, we are just substituting x plus h. So this is going to be cos h plus x plus h like that. All right, so that's it. Uh, let's substitute now into the formula dy dx is equivalent to the limit as h approaches to zero of f of x plus h, which is uh, cos h, cos x plus h, all right, minus f of x, which is cos x everything over h. So here there are actually so many ways of uh, having this first principle, but uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, our identities, all right? Remember from our identities, we have got uh, cos A plus B from, uh, which is going to give us cos of A, cos of B. So this is cos of A by cos of B. Then we introduce a negative, which is going to be sine of A, sine of B. All right, let's take this into, into consideration here because we've got X plus H. So this is same as A plus B. So that means we can rewrite this expression as the dy X is equal to the limit of H is approaching to zero of cos x plus h is going to be cos x cos h just like cos a cos b so we are going to have cos x cos h minus just like what we had sine a sine b which is sine x sine h all right so this is what you're going to have minus cos of x which is this one that we already have here everything over h all right uh, we have applied our identities yes but there is something that is happening here. Um, we are going to separate our terms here, but the way that we are going to separate these terms, uh, we are going to separate in a manner that uh, we can actually apply our, our identities. I mean, these are limits that we are given, not identities, but these are actually limits because we are given the limits here, uh, cos h minus one over h as x approaches to zero to zero, sine h. So to have these limits, how are we going to rewrite our expression? That is the question. Okay, let me take you back here 
uh, we can collect the terms with cost together from this part because we've got cost X here. We have got also cost X here. So we can collect these terms together. That means we are going to have the dy, uh, the X of limit as X approaches to zero of uh, cost of X. But let me just write here so that we do not waste much time. Uh, if we are to write as cost X, H, uh, cos x cos h minus cos x together you can see that cos and cos is common so we can factor out cos x that means we are going to remain with cos h minus one all right cos of h minus one all right uh minus here we've got uh, minus sine of x uh sine of h everything over h all right we have managed to factor out and so forth then there is this part that is common. A, B over C is the same as A over C by B over C, which is the same thing. All right, sorry, 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 as B over one like that. Okay, then also A minus B or A plus B over C like this is the same thing as A over C minus B over C. All right, I'm going to work out these so that we can understand how to separate this part here uh using this part the last one we have got two terms that we have here this term okay this is our first term this is our second term so for us to separate we are going to have this term over h just like a minus b these are two terms so it's a over c minus b over c okay so that means we are going to have dy dx which is equivalent to Okay, let me write this part here. So it is going to be equivalent to limit as X approaches to zero of, if we are to separate these terms, we are going to have something of this nature. All right, let me erase this part. Maybe it can be clear if I write it aside. I want us guys to understand that's why I'm doing this. If we were to separate this, we were going to remain with cos X, cos H minus one, all right, like that, uh, this is one part here, cos x minus one over h minus, we separate here, we're going to have sine x, sine h, everything. Sorry for that, guys, h, yes, yes, sorry for that. Okay, anyways, we have got to have sine h over h like that. This is what you're going to have, okay. Now, we have separated in this manner, but these identities, as you can see, they separated the H and the H, the H and the H. So this is what we want. We want to have cos H minus one over H. So how are we going to separate so that we can have that? That is where we are going to apply this part here that I have said A over B, A times B over C is the same as A over C times B over one, or you can even write it as A times B over C, as long one part is carrying the denominator which is C because this is multiplication, okay? So here we are going to separate. So this is going to remain with the edge here. So it's the same thing as just multiplying like cos. Okay, let me use the one that I was using here. So it's the same thing as writing it as cos of X, all right? By cos H minus one over H. This is the same way. Minus, we do the same thing here. We separate this part of sine H over H. So it is the same way as writing minus sine X by sine of H over H like that. So we have separated, we have managed to separate in a way that we can be able to apply these identities so or these limits that we are given. But remember cos H, minus one over H as X approaches to zero, that's a zero. So that means this part here, we are going to have a zero here. All right, so this is going to give you a zero and zero times zero, that's a zero. So there's nothing that you're going to obtain. So it's zero minus. We move on to sine H over H. Okay, let's see what we are going to obtain from sine H over H as X approaches to zero, that's a one. So which means here, we are going to remain with a one. All right, so let me put this way so that we can clearly see this part. So this is going to be a one. So one times sine X is going to give us sine X. 
All right, so that is what we're going to have if we have applied the limits now, if H is approaching to zero, because these are the limits that we have here as, as H, X is going to be equal to zero. So we've got H, I don't know where I'm now having this X from, this is our H, sorry. So we've got Y dx, which is going to be the answer now. So that's zero minus sine X and zero minus sine X is negative sine X. So that is the derivative of course, and uh, this uh, actually we agree together from the derivative. If you uh, know your, your, your derivatives are uh, truly, then you agree that truly if we are to find the derivative, of course, it gives us a negative sign X, but this we're doing it using the longer way that is the first principles. So that's what we had guys for cos X. We are going to check the other part of the question, uh, which is question 2.2. Okay, so the first one was actually having five marks. So this was actually five marks for doing this. All right, anyways, uh, 2.2, we are given, determine the y dx in each of the following cases. Simplification is not required. So you are not allowed, you are not uh, like, they are not saying do not simplify, but they are just saying, just write the, the derivative. Do not worry about simplifying those answers. Okay, so that's what we had on this part, which is 2.2. So I'm going to rewrite these expressions. Y is equal to X minus the arc cot plus one arc cosec X. All right, so this is what we had on 2.21. We are given the derivative Y is equivalent to X minus arc cot. This is arc cot, not arc cos. So that was arc cot of X, okay, in a bracket then by another bracket of one plus arc cosec. So this is arc cosec like that. All right, so this is what we have and we want to find the, uh, the derivative. So here we can just apply the derivative, you know, the product to y because this we can refer as our ux and this as our vx. And uh, remember that uh, the derivative of y with respect to x for product rule, depending with how you want to write it, you can start with the derivative of u by vx plus the derivative of vx uh, by ux, or you can write this as ux by the derivative of vx. It's just one same thing. Some can use a v dy dx plus u uh, dv dx, still one and the same thing. All right, so from our formula, that means dy dx is going to be equal to the derivative of u which is if we are to find the derivative of x here, we have got one minus cot, arc cot. What is the derivative of arc cot? All right, from our derivatives, we are actually given these derivatives of arc cot. Uh, remember, ring, okay, let me write it here, but we have this from our formula sheet and the, I, I, I actually forgot to put this uh, here, but arc cot, of x, the derivative of it with respect to x gives us negative one over one plus x squared. But here we want to see what we have. There is a negative already here. So that means negative times this negative is going to be a positive. But since simplification is not required, I can just write it as it is negative. Then here I got negative one over one plus x squared. I just can even put this in a bracket like this, all right? So that is the derivative of ux, all right? Whatever that we are going to have on this derivative, we are going to multiply it to vx, which means vx is this part is going to remain as it is one plus arc cosec uh, x. So that's what we have. Plus here, there is now the derivative of vx or you can start with ux, then the, I don't know which one is best for you, All right? So you can start with the ux, we can use this one on top, starting with ux, uh, so that we do not have uh, anything that is going to affect us. So it's going to be x minus uh, arc cot x. So this is our ux by the derivative of vx. So we are going to find the derivative of vx, whereby we've got one, the derivative of one, that's a zero, then arc cosec. Arc cosec is also given in our formula sheet. This is negative one over x, the square root of x squared minus one. So this is x squared minus one. Okay, 
So that's what you're going to have. Since simplification is not required, I'm just going to leave my answer like this. So you're showing the derivative of h separately and uh, well presented. All right, so that was 2.21 and we've got uh, three marks because this is three times three each having three marks. 2.22, we are now asked, so this is actually lean 7x, not lean x per 7. Remember lean, you can't have a base in lean. So this is lean 7x. So I'm going to rewrite this expression properly so that we actually understand what we were given. All right, so that's 2.22. Just going to rewrite it here. Okay, so 2.22, we're given that y is equal to x squared. If I can just write as it as it is. So this is x squared plus lean 7x over 7 to the exponent of x. Okay, so what do we have here without simplifying? Uh, we can actually apply a quotient rule because this is a fraction. So you can apply our quotient rule. If you want to apply product rule, then you are going to rewrite this expression as y is equal to x squared plus lean. Uh, this is lean. Why am I writing this i here? Okay, this is just lean, guys. Hope someone will say, what is happening now? This is just lean. Okay, so you can write this as lean 7x in a bracket like this times 7 to the exponent of negative x. By using this, you can apply a product rule if you want. Okay, but I'm just going to maintain as it is. We've got our ux here and our vx here, and we actually understand or know that the derivative of y with respect to x, if you are to apply uh, uh, the quotient rule, it is going to be the v, the derivative of ux minus u x by the derivative of vx, everything over vx squared. So we are going to square this vx. Okay, so let's see what you're going to have. dy dx is equal to v, which is seven to the exponent of x. So we're going to have seven, to the exponent of x by the derivative of ux, which is an expression. So this is actually an expression that we have. So I'm just gonna open bracket. x squared, that is 2x plus lean 7x. Remember the derivative of lean, it's uh, f prime x over f of x. So f prime, that is 7x, which is going to give us seven over f of x, which is 7x. So this is going to cancel and give us one over x. We're going to obtain uh, one over x from this. Okay, minus ux, which is u, that is the whole expression, which is x squared plus lean 7x as it is by the derivative of here. Remember, this is seven to the exponent of x, which is the same way as writing as a to the exponent of x, where we know that is going to be a to the exponent of x lean a. So this is going to give us seven to the exponent of x lean a, our a is seven. So it's going to be lean seven. So you can even put this in a bracket if you want. All right, everything over the x squared, which is seven to the exponent of x, then we square that one. Okay, since Simplification is not required, then I'm not going to waste my time. Just going to leave it here. So that's what you do in exam, guys. Do not waste much time on things that a simplification is not required. Okay, so that was what we had. And we're going to move on to 2.23, which is last question on uh, derivatives where simplification was not required. There we are given y is equivalent to one plus e to the exponent of negative two x over x plus tan of x. Okay, I'm gonna rewrite again this question here. So this was 2.23, 2.23. Y is equivalent to one plus e to the exponent of negative two x over, that was x tan 12 x, x plus tan 12 x like this. All right, still, we are back again, we are back again, ux over vx, we are back again to the quotient rule. All right, so that means our dy dx was going to be taken from vx uh, by the derivative of ux minus ux by the derivative of vx over vx squared. We are still back uh, on that concept that we applied last time. All right, so let's see what you're going to have. dy dx is equivalent to vx, that is the, denominator here, x plus tan 12x is going to repeat as it is, which is x plus 
tan uh, 12x, all right, uh, by the derivative of the numerator here, which is ux. So we are going to have the derivative of one, which is a zero, e to the exponent of negative two x. Remember e, guys, I told you that it is the derivative of f of x. Sorry, sorry, I'm now on e. I'm still thinking of lean. Okay, so this one is the derivative of f of x by e to the exponent of f of x. So the derivative here of negative two x that's negative two. So we are going to obtain negative two e to the exponent of negative two x, all right? Minus ux, ux, that's the numerator as it is, which is one plus e to the exponent of negative two x by the first derivative now of the x, which is x is one tan. Remember tan gives us, uh, if you are to find the derivative of tan, that is six squared, but there is a 12 that we have here. So it is going to be plus, 12 sec squared 12 x. All right, so that's what you're going to have uh, on top, everything over uh, vx squared. So vx, that is x plus tan 12 x, everything you can square it. So that's what we had guys, just put the brackets here, just the brackets here if you want, or just leave it like that. So since, Simplification is not required. I'm just going to leave it at that point. Um, that's what we had there. All right, that's 2.23. Uh, 2.3 with four marks, determine or calculate divide x with the aid of logarithmic differentiation of y is equivalent to this expression. And that was actually four marks. So that was 2.3. All right, so let's see what was supposed to happen here. Uh, 2.3. All right, so that was y is equivalent to x squared uh, into three plus x to the exponent of one minus x squared. Is it one minus x squared? All right, so yeah, that's one minus x squared. Okay, so with the use of logarithmic uh, differentiation, remember that we are supposed to introduce uh, the log part but uh, it is best for you to introduce it as lean. So this is going to be lean here and you introduce lean there on this part like this. All right, so by just introducing lean, there is something that is happening on the uh, right-hand side here. So we've got, uh, there's something that is happening here. All right, what is happening? We've got two terms, this term and this term A and B. Remember that lean A, B, is the same as lean of A plus lean B from your exponents and logarithms there on mathematics and four. All right, so you can separate this as lean Y is equal to lean X squared plus lean three plus X to the exponent of one minus X squared. Okay, with this, we still have a long way. Remember, if there is an exponent of lean, you are going to drop that exponent just lean uh, lean A to the exponent of B is same as B lean A. So that's what we have here. So we're going to have lean Y, we drop the exponent. This is two lean X plus, we drop this exponent. This is one minus X squared lean three plus X. So that's what you're going to have at the end. All right, so here we, um, I was just rewriting the expression. We haven't started to differentiate. This is just rewriting the expression. Now let's differentiate. Remember, where if we are to find the derivative of y with respect to x, what is going to happen? Here we've got lean y. We do not have x on this part. There is a y. So this is going to give us one over y. Remember the derivative of lean, if it, that, if it is a, just a normal term like that, that's a one over y. So one over y uh, dy dx is equal to, uh, we move on to two lean x. So remember, lean x is one over x, but there is two. So it is going to be two over x plus, sorry, we move on to a plus here. These two that we have here, that's a product here because these two are multiplying each other. So applying your product rule, I don't know if it is going to be clear here. Remember our product rule, so many ways guys of writing it, you can write it as u, uh, the derivative of the x, all right? Uh, plus we can start even with u, but now it's the u, the derivative of u by vx. So many ways guys of writing u. So our u here is one minus x squared, which means it is not going to affect anything. So we are going to have one 
minus x squared by lean three plus x. Remember the derivative of lean, it's uh, the first derivative over f of x. So the first derivative of three plus x, that is one. So it is going to be a one here. So you're going to have one over f of x, which is three plus x, right? So that's what we have here. Uh, plus, all right, we move on plus the derivative of ux, okay? The derivative of u, you have got a zero uh, minus two x, because you're going to drop this exponent. So it's zero minus two x, which is minus two x by vx, it just remains as it is, which is lean three plus x like that, it just remains as it is, all right? So that's what we have, of which we can just simplify because here it's a normal derivative. So let's just simplify before we introduce our y here. So this is one over y dy dx is equal to two over x plus, uh, this is same as uh, one minus x squared over one. So you can multiply the numerator to the numerator, which is going to be one minus x squared over three plus x. Okay, the same thing here, we can just simplify positive and negative, that's a negative. So you're going to have negative two x lean three plus x like that. All right, by removing this y here, we can just multiply by y both sides, uh, this whole part here, we multiply by y, that means this can cancel, we remain with dy dx. So remember the purpose is to remain with dy dx. So dy dx is equal to y into this part here, which is y into two over x plus one minus x squared over three plus x minus two x lean three plus x. But the derivative that we have, it's of y with respect to x. But on our answer here, there is a y which is there. So we're supposed to remove that y that we have. How do we remove this y? We remove it by substituting with the y that we had on the original question. Remember our original question here, it was y is equal to x squared uh, plus this and that and that. Okay, so that's what you're going to do in place of y. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, so in place of y guys, we're going to substitute this part, what is happening here. All right, I want this. All right, so let us substitute. Uh, we are going to have dy dx is equal to, in place of y, we're going to substitute our y, which was x squared, into three plus x, remember it was to the exponent of one minus x squared, okay. This whole bracket remains as it is, which is two over x plus, all right, that's a plus one minus x squared over three plus x minus two x lean three plus x. So this part is going to remain as it is. So that's your dy dx for the uh, logarithmic differentiation that we've given. So that's how they ask these questions, guys. And this is the way that you're supposed to have. So what I advise you, because derivative is a continuation from those derivatives that you had on your, in your info. So you are just applying the same thing, but now it's uh, just a matter of uh, being careful with the working and uh, the stages that you are being given and the rules that you are given to, to apply. But the derivative of all other terms remains the same. All right. So let's move on to the other part of the paper, which is now on 2.4. So on 2.4, we are given an implicit function. All right, so given the implicit function, x to the exponent of four plus y squared is equal to three, determine the y dx, and that is three marks for that, because it's two by three. All right, so we are going to have our implicit function here, 2.41, that is x to the exponent of four plus y to the exponent of two is equal to three. So Remember implicit, we are finding the derivative with respect to x. So that is dy dx. All right, so here dy dx, we're going to drop the exponent, which is four x to the exponent. We subtract one here, that is going to be a negative, that is going to be a three plus y squared. We do not have x here. So we're going to find the derivative of y as it is, which is two y, then you multiply by dy dx. That's your implicit. Then of three, that's a constant, which is a zero. So since I need dy dx, I'm supposed to transpose the four x to the exponent of three to the other side of the equation, which is going to be two y dy dx is equivalent to, if I transpose, that will be a negative x to the exponent of three. 
So to find dy dx, what am I going to do? Divide by 2y since 2y is multiplying. So if we are to cancel this, we are going to remain with uh, dy dx. So that's therefore dy dx is equivalent to, yes, here we can just simplify two into four, that is two. So that means we are going to have negative two x to the exponent of three over y. So that is your implicit function. That's how you find the derivative of y with a respect to x. All right, anyways, on 2.42, Determine the equation of the tangent to the graph at a point which is presented as one minus square root of two. So this is X and this is Y. Okay, this is the equation of a tangent. Okay, let me start by having my equation here. Uh, we actually understand that the equation can be, is supposed to be given in this form, it's 2.42. All right, the equation of a straight line, a tangent is a straight line, remember? A tangent, that's a straight line from your N4, N3, N2 star. So if it is a straight line, therefore its equation can be written in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, where m here is the gradient, which is the dy dx at the given point, which is one minus square root of two. So by substituting the value of x, we can actually find the gradient, which is m. So gradient, which is equal to m is, we just substitute x from the point. Remember it's one minus square root of two. We've got uh, one, minus the square root of two. So we've got X and Y, so X is one. So here we can just even substitute on our calculator guys without wasting much time. So let me do this on our calculator. So this is minus, okay, let's put a fraction first. So we've got uh, minus two times X, which is bracket X. We said our X here, it's a one. So X we are going to substitute a one. So that one does not affect to the exponent of three. Okay, anyways, let's do for the sake of others. Then the y there is the minus square root of two. So you're going to put minus square root of two like that. So that is your gradient, which is a square root of two. So m is equal to the square root of two. So if our m is equal to square root of two, therefore let us substitute this into the equation. Y is equal to m, which is square root of two x, plus c. So to find c, you're going to substitute the point that you are given again. In place of y, you substitute negative uh, square root of two plus square root, sorry, which is equal to not plus. So this is equal to square root of two times x, x which is one plus c. So to find c, definitely I have to transpose the square root of two to the other side of the equation which is now minus square root of two. So it's now minus square root of two, minus square root of two, which is minus two square root of, just like minus one, minus one. Okay, let's just use your calculator. Minus square root of two, uh, minus square root of two. That's negative two square root of two. So that's the value of for C. So C is equal to minus two square root of two. So therefore, Y can be written as M X, which is square root of two X. So we're going to have square root of two X Plus C, our C is minus two square root of two. So that's the equation that you are going to have at the end. So these are typical questions that I need you guys to understand or to work on as much as you can, as you are preparing yourselves for the exams, which are ahead of time. So that's what we had guys from Maison African Motives working on uh, Mathematics N5. So this is Maths N5, uh, question papers and revisions. So make sure that you join uh, the membership so that you'll be able to get uh, access to some of the areas of your choice or questions of your choice that you have got challenges on. So by joining membership, it allows you to be part of the family that you're going to be working on your own information that you need as long as it's under Mathematics N5. So that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.